Hello and good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you doing? Absolutely blessed to have a conversation with you because you get it. And you're not afraid to teach it, share it, build upon it, and just, you know, let the world have something that they can have a positive vibe about. I appreciate that so much, sincerely. For you to be in this moment, that means that you have lived it. Therefore, you're saying, okay, if, if I've lived it and I have felt it, therefore other people need to do the same. How did you know when to cross that line? Um, I think I knew very early on. Really? I grew up in a household where I was taught that my story would be what would heal me if I didn't hide it, but also would help others to understand that they could achieve and be better. And so that was something that I knew from very early on. And so I knew that as long as I wasn't ashamed of my own personal growth, that it would always be a tool that I could use to make sure other people knew they weren't alone. And it has been sort of the guiding principle of how I deal with any person on my talk show, any person I ever come across. See, that explains every reason why I always feel like that watching your show is a reflection of everyday experiences. And, and, and that's why I tap in, because you're so in love with your community. It's not just about you. It's about the community. Yeah, it is definitely. I mean, we're, we're all on this planet spinning around. I mean, at some point, we all have to realize that we're here to be here for each other. And I think that sometimes we can we can feel isolated. We can feel alone. We start to think that this experience is, you know, um, very isolating. And it's yeah. like you have to remember, like, the thing that I'm going through, you're going through the things that you're feeling, I'm feeling. And so we don't talk about it. That's what makes us feel like no one else gets me. And so the fact that we can take a moment to say, you know what, I'm going through it. I understand. It does help build that community and helps us all get stronger together. You know, one of the things that's great about you celebrating your third third year on television with the daytime show is the fact that you've needed those other two seasons to be in this moment of now. And there's no way that what you're going to do this season. Oh, yes, I did. (laughs) I mean, isn't that amazing how what we experience becomes tools for tomorrow? Listen, it's the best thing ever. What we experience becomes tools for tomorrow. Let me tell you something. I'm about to use that for uh, season three promo. You just wrote our season three promo. <laughs> uh, but no, um, it, it is great. It is great. And I'm actually, you know, every year, you know, since season one, it's like I, this is, this. I'm learning. I'm learning how to do this even better and better every year. It just keeps getting better. Um, you know, the mission of season three is to uh, resolve and evolve. Yeah. And that's for my guests is understanding, like, we're going to end this each show with resolving your issues. And we're going to give you that first step to teach you how to evolve to that next level. And I think that's an important step, especially in the genre of daytime talk I'm in. It's about, like, not only can you share the emotions, the raw things that are going on in your home, in your life, in your feelings, but also you're going to get some real tools to evolve and be better than this. One of the things that you've got is the fact that it's, you've always got your eye on uh, on those of us that are watching it. Because, I mean, I feel like that even when, when there's family squabbles on there, your heart is saying, okay, how can I learn from this so that my viewers can learn from it too and make sure that they, they have that connection of understanding? Yes, definitely. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's important. Yeah, yeah. Transparency. Oh, my God. How do you take that to the lens of a camera and, and feel great about being truthful in your faith? <laughs> I'm, I'm not ashamed of anything that I've been through or anything that I, I plan on going through. You know, I end each show saying, let's keep talking and growing mm-hmm. because I think that's the only thing we can do on this earth. That's one of the things that we know is constant. You know, growth is inevitable in nature around us and it's also inevitable in each one of us. And the minute something stops growing is the minute that it ceases to exist. Yeah. And so for me, transparency comes in that growth. And so I will always be comfortable in being transparent because in that moment is where I learn or get a perspective or understand something about myself to grow and be better. Does this put you on a speaking tour? Because, I mean, you know, TV has its its moments. You're, you're fit within a certain time limit. But, man, to hear you speak publicly would be one of the greatest experiences. Oh, you're, you're kind. Yeah, I do do a little bit of a speaking tour. And so I'm actually thinking about planning a, a nation tour for myself just to kind of, like, do what I do on the Karamo show where people can come. They come with their best friends, their family, you know, their partners, and get some some advice and tools so they can do just that, that resolve and call, uh, you know, um, resolve and evolve. You know, one of the things that we, in three um, that we started in season two is we have um, Q and K, yes. where my studio audience is get to just ask me any question and get advice from me. It could be about something singular with their family, and so it's important for me to make sure that people know they always have access to me so that I can like. 
if I can help you, I'm always going to try. How do you embrace for that? Because you don't know what that next question is going to be. I mean, that's like on the spot. Let me tell you something. My granny used to tell me you got two ears and you have one mouth, which means you're supposed to be doing one of those things double time, which is listening. And so what I've learned and one of my greatest skills is I'm an empathetic listener. So I'm always going to make sure that I'm listening to what they're saying and how they're moving, which allows me, no matter if it's on the spot, to be able to give them real advice. Because I'm not giving generic advice. And this is something that I'm proud of myself. Like I don't have some sound bite to give to every person to say this is for you. I don't believe in that. I believe what when you're sharing with me, I need to listen and hear the nuances of what your experience has been and then give you advice based on you. And so that that makes it easy for me because I'm not trying to fit everyone into some box of one piece of advice that I have. I'm trying to make sure that my advice fits you. Are you a daily writer? Because in watching the show and hearing you speak, it's almost like you're always in the in the mode of I am here to receive when I receive I share. Oof. Are you a writer? Because yes. this is now number two. <laughs> Everything that comes out of your mouth is poetic and beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I do write. I write daily. Um, I'm also a big reader. I love to read. I mean, like I start my mornings. You know, I'm of the generation that still that you know used to buy magazines and papers. Like I'm 43 years old, so I like to read a lot. And I think reading and writing allow me, but not just like news. I also read a lot of poetry. I read things that. Um, medical journals, science journals. And I think the more that I can just keep my mind um, understanding what the human experience is, it just allows me to keep myself open to the world. It allows me to keep myself in a space where I'm just always understanding how to receive and give back. Yeah. From one broadcaster to another, how are you keeping that voice healthy? Because you talk a lot. I mean, because I mean, what what is your secret of sounding so <laughs> dynamic? There's a lot of Coca-Cola. It's my, <laughs> my dirty habit. It's my dirty habit. If it can clean a, a car battery, it's going to help my pipes. And so it's my one thing that I should stop doing. I don't have any other vices like that, but I love, you know, two cans of Coca-Cola throughout the day. And so i got to do better. How do, you, how do you keep your composure in the way of your – there are so many of your stories that, that really very pull on my heartstrings as a viewer. And one of the reasons why I left television was because I let my emotions go through my eyes. How do you keep – your composure you know in the moment i'm so focused on someone else's healing and their okay. journey that it, it uh, you know it's weird because it's it's like when i'm in front of my studio audience often i don't see them anymore or hear them it's it's a very f weird experience once i'm locked in and listening to someone i can't hear anybody else yeah i'm so in tune with what they're saying that like my audience is in, in front of me and I don't see them or hear them anymore, that it allows me in that moment to, to be so focused that I'm not focused on my own emotions. But I will tell you this, there's often when I get home and now I've had a time, a moment to reflect on someone's pain mm -hmm. that has you know resolved into some evolution of them being better and that will make me emotional and so it's usually after because in the moment i'm just so focused on them and hearing what they're saying that it allows me not to be emotional but often many times afterwards i'll be like I i'll tell you this i'll see a clip and i'll start crying our own clip yep. where in the moment i didn't cry but later on i'll be crying Wow, wow. See, it's those after moments that I love to study. I love to learn from because I call that post-production blues that a lot of people do not see us when the microphones yep. are off. And it's like, so we have to regain control. Exactly. You know it. You know it. You know it. Yeah. I mean, like we, we put our hearts on our sleeves. We're in the moment. And so once you get back and you're really watching it back, you know, you, things, emotions and, 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 and feelings and triggers pop up. And so you have to know how to manage that. And so luckily for myself, I'm able to manage that. Hopefully you are able to manage yeah. that. Hopefully you have people that you can ask for advice for, you know, ask for support. You know, that's one of my biggest things that I always tell people, like, don't be afraid to ask for help. I think that we're in a space where, if you're afraid to ask for help, you'll find yourself in those post moments of life, period, no matter where you're at, finding yourself, again, feeling alone, feeling as if like no one can understand. And I think it's important for us always to remember to ask for help and know that people are out there who want to help you. God, I love where your heart is. I love where your heart is. Where can people go to find out more about Thanks you and everything you do so they can share some love with you? 
Sure. You know, like, um, so they can go to karamoshow.com, um, karamoshow.com, because they can find out where Karamo Show, we're nationally syndicated, so we play all over the yeah. country. Um, you know, we also play on Bounce, E, Bravo, so people can tune in. Um, and also there's links there to all my social media so that they can follow me and follow my journey. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Any time. <laughs> Listen, you you have been. I I'm, I'm one of those people who are like a student. I'm taking notes on everything you have said. So you are pretty pretty phenomenal. I will come back and learn from you anytime <laughs> you will have me. Will you be brilliant then? Okay. All right, brother. You too. Have a good one, man. <laughs>